You're listening to Inside the Village, where all news is local and no topic is off limits. So help me, Bob, it's bully in the alley. Hey, bully in the alley. So this me, is Bob, Inside the Village for the week of August 10th, 2023. I'm Scott Sexsmith, alongside uh, Michael Friscalanti, Editor-in-Chief uh, here at Village Media. Derek Turner is uh, MIA this week, uh, enjoying a, a much-deserved vacation. The incomparable Drew Armstrong at the <laughs> controls uh, this week. Good to have uh, Drew in the building. How's it going? Summer's so, almost uh, almost gone. So far, so good. Yeah, it is. we were just talking about that. What is it, August 9th today? August, uh, August 9th today. August 9th. Yep. It's crazy. It is crazy. Isn't it, it funny? You never see January and February go as fast as July and August. It's true. It's also, there's a weird vibe around the office, right? Because there's a lot of empty desks because it's crazy. A, a, we're a newsroom, so people are out covering the news and B, people are on vacation. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, as a manager, it's difficult, Scott, because I don't know where anybody is half the time. I'm just kidding. I feel your pain. I'm very, I'm very, you know what? I've been telling a lot of work. I'm very glad people are taking their holidays and I've told them. Stay the hell away from your phone. Don't answer it. And if the city's burning down, you'll know. We'll you, we'll get we'll find you. But otherwise, I don't want to hear from you. Well, it's all about uh, joy, positivity, and hope. <laughs> well, and got, today's guest <laughs> exemplifies that. We have a lot of that coming up. We certainly do. Uh, one thing about summertime, uh, it's uh, it's movie season, box office. Of course, the uh, two biggies, Barbie and Oppenheimer. Uh, have you seen uh, either one? Any plans to? I have not seen a movie in a theater. I think since the nineties. I can't get over the cost. Drew Drew just telling us he saw Barbie. Hope that's okay to disclose he that. He saw thing. it four times, I think he said. Well <laughs> he's a fan. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> over fifty bucks to go to a movie? Yeah. Well, if you get and the, get some popcorn? Yeah. But that's like you can't, I mean, you sound like an old man. It's like everywhere. It's like, well, I go to a baseball game, like I don't I don't go, it costs me so much money. It's do they still have cheap tu- remember, cheap Tuesday? Was that a thing? Uh, yeah, that was when I was a kid. That's yeah. when you go to the movies on Tuesday. Drew, do they still have two dollars? They do it. They still do True have that? confirms. They do have that yeah. still? Oh. My phone's ringing, Scott. Something is must it? Be a, oh, no, it can't be that important. Could be the call that changes everything. No. Is that your agent? I'm not answering no? that. No? All right. Uh, Barbie, the second film in history to eclipse $1 billion in global sales this year, uh, trailing uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie, which <laughs> did $1.3 billion. <laughs> which for movie? The Super Mario Brothers. Uh, yeah, Super Mario Brothers. $1.3 billion. <laughs> That is wild. Wow. I would, that would be the last movie on earth I'd want to go see, the Super Mario's movie. Certainly not going to pay 50 bucks uh, for crazy. it. I'll wait till it comes what out. What would the storyline be on that movie? What I don't get it. I don't Have know. Have you man. seen it? No. No? No. Okay. No. Is, Bar- uh, is Barbie in it? I, I don't believe so. <laughs> Drew could confirm, but uh, <laughs> you know who else could is the prime minister. Uh, he's in the news, uh, took his uh, 15-year-old son to see Barbie, they were wearing uh, pink shirts, good for them, posted it, and he's being eaten alive on social media. What are, what are people saying? Well, of course, he and uh, uh, Sophie, his wife, just recently announcing their uh, separation, asking for privacy, and I guess uh, the gist of where the heat's coming from, uh, he asked for privacy and then posted a picture of he and his son going out for a movie night. I don't know, is that bad? I, I don't get to weigh in on these things, good or bad, but... When I hear a politician ask for privacy, especially a prime minister, you're just not going to get that. You're the prime minister, no. right? So, I mean, I, I, I mean, I understand it's not easy what they're going through, but I guess if you ask for privacy and then post a photo, uh, people are going to have opinions. But I don't know if it's any different than people's opinions of Trudeau right now in general or any prime minister in general. People always yeah. have strong opinions. On Absolutely. That. Uh, to his credit, um, and this is by no means an endorsement, he uh, did balance things out by taking his daughter uh, the other night to see Oppenheimer and posted a picture. He did? He did. What were they wearing? I <laughs> I, I can't remember. <laughs> I just thought it was neat that uh, he took his son out to see... Uh, to see Barbie posted a picture and then took his daughter to see Oppenheimer posted a picture. I will not be seeing either of them, Scott. Certainly not. Unless you pay for it. Well, (laughs) (laughs) need a raise to make that happen. (laughs) All right, uh, let's uh, press ahead here to the uh, first word to Frisco, some breaking news uh, from our crack staff at the Trillium regarding the Greenbelt situation. Yeah, as we sit here today, this is the day that the Auditor General was releasing her report on her look uh, investigation into the Greenbelt. And it's a bombshell. Um, we've just posted our today's story from the Trillium, Aiden Shimandi, Charlie Pinkerton, and Jessica Smith-Cross, part of our crack team over there at Queen's Park. Uh, 
A top political staffer in Premier Doug Ford's government led the crafting of last year's Greenbelt changes, directing civil servants to evaluate lands chosen by developers for removal, is what the Auditor General has concluded. About 92% of the land removed from Ontario's signature protected area last year was made up of five sites that had been proposed by Ryan Amato, Housing Minister Steve Clark, Chief of Staff, by two developers who sat with him at an industry dinner in September of 2022. And here's the quote from Bonnie Lisk. This, the exercise to change the Greenbelt boundaries in fall 2022 cannot be described as a standard or defensible process. Defensible process. So you can imagine Doug Ford hasn't spoken about this yet, but there's going to be a lot of defensiveness uh, after this report. This is uh, exactly what a lot of people were expecting. That seems a uh, very backroomish. Yeah, it's it's pretty damaging, uh, and we'll, we'll see how the day unfolds with uh, what Ford and his government has to say. But uh, just to remind everybody that the Trillium staff's been doing fantastic work at Queens Park and reporting on these serious issues, including the Green Belt. And uh, you can find them at the Trillium.ca. Absolutely, check it out and uh, subscribe today. Some of the best writing you will see anywhere. Okay, moving to Sault Ste. Marie uh, and an unusual uh, fire uh, slash arson situation. And there's so much to unpack here. I don't even know where to start. Yeah, this is one of those stories uh, as an editor that is difficult. We make decisions all the time. We're not, you know, I like to say we're not saving lives over here. We do some. I do believe we have a hugely important role to play in society as as being the independent watchdog and being journalists. But we make difficult calls every day. And this is one of those local news calls we made where we obtained videos, a couple of different videos of a crime that occurred in the downtown core in broad daylight on a Saturday morning. Um, one man had a jerry can and was tossing gasoline at another man and lit him on fire. Um, it was a brief, he was on fire for you know a few seconds, managed to get the shirt off and stamp it out. But you know, pretty horrible crime to happen at any time of day, but especially at nine in the morning on a Saturday where people are driving by, walking by, and, uh, of course, we've been criticized by some people saying we shouldn't have published this, we shouldn't have you know, posted this video. But I'm of the belief that we can't um, turn around and pretend we don't see things, right? I mean, this is, uh, as many in many communities where we, where we have our news sites, many of the communities we serve, the downtowns have become a, a flashpoint of debate. Absolutely. How, what to do with the downtown, whether it's safe for people to be there, how do we improve the downtown, how do we help serve some of the vulnerable people who are there? And it's no different in Sault Ste. Marie. It's a constant discussion. The word downtown just brings about all kinds of different emotions. And my thing is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a defender of downtown. I go there. I, I enjoy the businesses down there. We, we, we're there all the time. Our office is in the heart of downtown. Yep. Um, but at the same time, we can't pretend that a crime like that didn't happen. Um, so I would totally uh, defend our, our, our um, rationale for posting that. I know some people are upset about it. But this is the news, and we cannot pretend we don't see things. That's kind of my mantra. Yeah, look, I saw the video, uh, like thousands of others, and I'm the first to admit that it was shocking. Two things really stood out to me the most. The first of which, the individual who was being doused with gasoline almost made little or no effort to escape or flee the situation that he found himself in. That, to me, was shocking. Moreover, and perhaps even more shocking than that, was the fact that the bystanders who were witness to this did absolutely nothing to help. Yeah. Almost like it was an acceptable occurrence. Yeah, like it happened every day. Almost, Absolutely. Right? And that was part of the thinking of us releasing this video, right, is because this uh, video, we, we obtained multiple angles of this video, that this incident. So we had two different videos we put together. And they, we had them right around the same time as the police had made an arrest in this case and laid a charge. It took about a week for them to find this individual. And again, he's innocent until proven guilty. But it's easy for a reader to read a quick brief that says a person was arrested for allegedly lighting a person on fire downtown. But to actually see it, because you'd, you'd gloss over that. It's like, oh, police put out a press release about a guy being arrested. Okay, wow, that's crazy. That's terrible. But when you actually see the video, you can see how it unfolded, and it really brings it home for you. It's like, wow, this actually happened down here. And so, you know, as journalists, I feel like we're always trying to drill down as deep as we can. And this is one of those cases where we did have footage of it. We're going to show it to you. I mean, this is local journalism. We're showing you what happened in your community, and I think it's fair game. And I don't know how you can't, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, we have to show it. But, I mean, it, it, it begs the question, what the hell is wrong with yeah. the world today that this is, you know, seemingly okay that nobody wanted or, or cared to do anything? Well, the good, the bad, and the ugly is exactly the way I look at it. That's what I feel like our role is, right? We, we tell a lot of great stories about what happened in Sault Ste. Marie. We also tell some bad stories, yeah. and we tell some ugly stories. And you have to have that variety. You have to have that place where you can go and say, 
I trust what these guys are telling me. They're 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 keeping their eyes open for what's happening in the community. If we don't have that, imagine what people where would they be getting their information from? It would all just be rumors and whatever. So yeah, yeah, we need that. Sadly, none of it uh, none of which you'll read on Facebook. But that's uh, yeah, that's another story, story for another that's episode another story. of ITV. All right, to uh, a little more happier news. A great story uh, from uh, wonderful reporter Jessica Owen from Collingwood today uh, about a couple who have been together and married for seventy years. Yeah. You know, it's funny, right? In local journalism, we often write about, you know, the lo- the local lottery winner or the local couple celebrating 50 years or the local couple or the, you know, the person celebrating their 100th birthday. We do those stories. They're important. You know, like we just talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. These are great stories. We want to yeah. shine a light on those people celebrating those kind of milestones. But have you ever seen a couple married for 70 years? I've never, <laughs> I've no. never heard of that. So I had to actually go check the date. So um, this is... Uh, the Bouchers, right? So uh, Howard and Verna Boucher. Right. Uh, they he was he's now ninety two. She's eighty nine. So if my math is right, that means she was nineteen, and he was twenty two when they got married. Awesome. And they've been together for seventy years. I mean, that's that boggles my mind. We've been doing this show for one year. I mean, could you imagine seventy years? No, <laughs> it's crazy. No, and we don't even live together. No, I know. <laughs> we'd have a way better. <laughs> we'd have a way better show. I think the the, the B roll would be a lot better. It would be awesome. <laughs> Exactly, but just and just, I'll say this much: there would be nothing expired in our fridge. That's that's for sure. That's for sure. One hundred percent. Imagine what they have seen in seventy years. Well, this one then the story goes is, goes into great detail. But there's beautiful anecdotes about what they've experienced, the different yeah. things they've gone through. No, I love stories like that. I, I would. I just think that's local journalism in a nutshell, right? I mean, of course, these people deserve to have their story told. Seventy years—that's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, just to live that long, first of all, and then to be with the same partner for seventy years. It's fantastic. That's why I hope stuff. we're together for 70 years. I Scott. hope so. I, the good Lord willing. Uh, to do that, though, I think you need a lot of uh, joy, hope, and positivity. We referenced it earlier in the show, and that's what today is all about. Uh, Gurdip Pander uh, of the Yukon is today's guest. How exciting is that, right? Everybody knows he's a viral video superstar. He was, especially during the pandemic, doing the beautiful dance videos from the Yukon that you saw, that I saw, that everybody loved at the time. And he happens to be doing a tour through Ontario and passing through the Sioux. And we asked him last night if he'd come on this morning, and he's coming on. I can't wait. Yeah, it's not very often that uh, we have a guest in studio. He's just uh, next door in the green room getting ready. So we'll take a break, reconfigure the set, and come back with Gurdip Pander of the Yukon on Inside the Village right after this. For the latest in in-depth features and enterprise journalism from your local writers at Village Media, be sure to check out The Big Read. The Big Read. It's the full story behind the headlines. Look for The Big Read on your favourite Village Media website across Ontario. Welcome back to Inside the Village with Michael Friscalanti, Editor-in-Chief here at Village Media. I'm Scott Sexsmith. Uh, not very often that uh, we sit side by side, but we only do it for very special occasions. Uh, and today is certainly uh, one of them. He's uh, danced uh, for the past few years like no one has been watching, yet millions of people worldwide have in fact uh, been watching, and we are absolutely thrilled to have uh, Inside the Village with us today, Gurdip Pender of the Yukon. Gurdip, welcome to Inside the Village. Welcome to Northern Ontario. It's great to have you. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you very much for your kind and warm words. And I'm so thrilled and feeling wonderful to be in Sioux. And I'm enjoying this amazing city. When the pandemic uh, first started, uh, you became a part of much of our lives uh, through your uh, social media posts, spreading joy and positivity, uh, because goodness knows we all needed it. Did you ever think back then that you would get to where you are now? Absolutely no. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I started posting my videos, I thought that a few people would watch and uh, probably th- they would appreciate the effort. But I didn't know that people from coast to coast to coast across the country and beyond, they would be watching and they would be uh, using my videos uh, for their positivity, that was very honoring for me. It was amazing. I mean, I remember watching. I, mean, I don't think anyone that I knew didn't see them. Uh, and they would just pop up. And my wife especially was just, she couldn't get enough of them. Everyone you posted, she was watching. <laughs> <laughs> Can you kind of start for, take us back to the beginning, your deep, uh, how, when you came to Canada and how you got into this? Uh, how, did, how did it all start? 
So I came to Canada in 2006. Uh, initially, I was navigating uh, my life in a new country, trying to figure out things, uh, language, culture, work, everything, uh, just basics. And uh, although, yes, I've been doing this dance since my childhood, this stayed my love forever. So I've been doing uh, like uh, uh, sometimes in the community, sometimes with the friends, with friends. So in 2011, I moved to the oh. Yukon. <laughs> where I started hosting uh, proper classes and lots and lots of community members started to come to attend my classes. And over there, um, I did uh, a performance during Canada Day in 2016. And a friend of mine, he made a video of that, uh, uh, that performance, very short, informal, casual video. And in the evening, I just posted on my social media just to show to local friends. And overnight, 300,000 people <laughs> wow. watch that video. So that's how I started to recognize the power of videos, power of social media. And then uh, I've been posting my videos on and off uh, time to time. I did several collaborations with different people from different walks of life. Can, can I ask, Gurdip, out of all the places in Canada to settle, uh, why the Yukon? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good question. Uh, I think uh, since my childhood, I have kind of that uh, that interest in going to uh, very out of the box, remote uh, new places like where nobody can think of going to. Um, and also in 2011, when I became Canadian. Um, I was going through some reflection on how much I go, uh, how much I know about Canada. At that time, I decided to do a tour. That was a very low profile tour, but I went everywhere. And during my tour, I also went to the Yukon. And very first day, Yukoners invited me to their gathering. We had some uh, good uh, uh, dancing and music. Uh, it was very my very first day over there uh, in, in the Yukon. And I was uh, impressed by that, uh, that uh, hospitality and welcoming nature of that remote place. Uh, it felt like my village because I was born in a village, mm -hmm. in the village of Seyard. So I felt, it felt like uh, my village where people were connecting more like, uh, more deeply. And very next day I went outside to explore the nature uh, and I was impressed by the nature of that place. It was very powerful, amazing, sacred. And uh, that experience by looking at mountains and lakes, uh, it, it, uh, it inspired me to just uh, stay there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just adopted that remote, uh, uh, magnificent mystical magical place yes. as my own place it definitely is a magical place mm -hmm. and your videos are very magical in a way too because you're, you're definitely focused on there's a goal to these videos what's what's the message you're trying to convey to canadians and other people around the world who watch them yes yes uh, my videos the dance videos i do yes i definitely do with some goals i have some uh, ideas in my mind so the basic Ideas are about uh, spreading joy, hope, and positivity. Uh, I strongly feel that uh, um, that we need them these days when uh, uh, we all know that we are going through some interesting times when uh, we have lots and lots of going in our lives. We have busy lifestyles uh, from back to back uh, in work and at home. Sometimes it's hard to find balance between life and work. Uh, and uh, there are some, several issues in our lives like financial, health, uh, other issues we don't, never know. And also, w we live in, in the age of information. You folks are working mm -hmm. in the media. You know that so much information is there, information, information, information. You open up um, any app or website. Um, there's so, so many things to process. And, and people, the cons consumers of those, that information, sometimes they get overwhelmed with uh, lots of information. Although information is great when if information is correct, but sometimes there's a lots and lots of uh, other kind of information is also coming into our, our feed. And that also creating sort of depression, like mm. some mental health, some other things. Sometimes people, you start your day uh, with, with a happy note, like you're smiling, you're feeling great. And suddenly you open up your phone and open up that app and that headline, it showed up and now, you're not feeling that great mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so, so there, and 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 we we'll, we we'll live in a, in a world these days. There's there's a, 
there are lots and lots of opinions. Although it's great to have opinions, sometimes opinions clash, mm -hmm. and sometimes it also leading to uh, different divisions in the society and in the world, which is not good. So I feel that with the joy, hope, and positivity, it's not just a, it's not just a mental health for your well-being. Uh, yes, it is, but it goes beyond. Because when you're joyful, when you're positive, when you're happy, you open your heart. Mm -hmm. You open your heart to many things. Then you are more agreeing to what other people are saying. Because when you're happy, you are more willing to connect with other people. You are more willing to engage in a positive way. Even if your, your, your ideas and opinions, they are different than others, but you start to understand that, that everybody has something something to say. So it, it, it brings people together. It brings uh, communities together, um, our country together. It brings the world together. And and when there's so much going on in this world, um, uh, positivity is, is like healing. Joy is like healing. Um, when there's a sadness, when there's suffering, then when there's a tension. So I find that joy, hope, and positivity, they are therapies, they are medicines, which we all need that. So, so I became very passionate about these goals, spreading joy, hope, and positivity through my movement well, with, with my dance, because I feel that movement is also very important, because when we move our bodies, it creates that energy, that mm -hmm. heat inside our body. Mm -hmm. um, it helps us to find that joy. Same like uh, you are sitting in a home um, and you feel a bit depressed or sad and, and then you start to walk. You decide to go out for a walk or running or swimming or whatever activity you love the most. And then you feel happy, you feel That's joyful. Mm -hmm. In a similar way, joy, hope and positivity through dance move, it works like that. It creates uh, uh, lots and lots of cheers, mm -hmm. smiles and good vibes uh, so so these became my goals when you do when you receive a lot of feedback and i'm sure you have from a lot of people who watch your videos are there ones that stick out that really moved you that say wow this person that really was something great happened because they watched my videos yes i do have many many examples um I, i'll give you a few examples uh, uh, one which is coming to my mind is during the peak of pandemic uh, um, I received a video from uh, Texas in the U.S. Uh, someone sent me a video and he wrote me that his brother of his sister uh, and his sister was in the hospital at that time. And he wrote me that she was in, in the hospital bed and uh, she was watching my video, like holding her phone. And, uh, and then uh, she decided to make a video for me from her hospital bed and 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 when i started watching that video oh my god i felt very touched i felt very touched that that she was seeing that that good deep i am here in the hospital and i'm i'm watching your videos uh, not only watching in the video in the bed i'm also trying to move a <laughs> little bit to the music and <laughs> dancing and, and trying to find joy during the time when uh, there was no joy around her in a, such a situation. Pandemic, hospital, everything, uh, everything was confined. So, so I have one more more example um, um, from Newfoundland, Labrador. Someone sent me a message through social media. Hey, uh, if you can do dancing for um, uh, my son and and my daughter-in-law, that will that will be great. And then and then she wrote me that uh, a few years ago. Um, they both both passed away in a car accident, yeah. and she mm -hmm. wrote me that she was trying to find joy, and she wrote me that uh, a dance, little dance in uh, in that dedication would help her to to find that joy. And I did that, and and I got very wonderful, very powerful feedback. So these kind of examples that 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 people not just watch. They, they take uh, it to that, that very powerful um, uh, place where uh, not only you find your, your smiles, you also find your healing. Mm. Mm -hmm. You're on a uh, cross-country uh, tour that uh, we'll talk about in a sec, but I wanted to bring up, uh, obviously you're known for your uh, Bangra dancing. What people may not know is that you're an accomplished author. You love to write, and that is another passion of yours. Can you tell us uh, about that and your books? 
Yes, I love to write. Actually, I um, my love to uh, love for writing started uh, during my early years when I was in school. I started writing poems, stories, uh, different things. Although I didn't publish that because that was more like uh, a teenage literature. <laughs> um, but uh, when I went to university and college, I uh, started writing more like uh, on uh, other subjects. Um, uh, my first book, it was in poetry. It was in Punjabi language, which is my first language. It's uh, it's it is filled with different uh, experiences, different uh, sentiments. More mostly uh, revolving around farming life, because I was born in a farming family where uh, people were growing uh, wheat and rice as as uh, the way to live their life. Um, and then. Uh, a few years later, um, an incident happened uh, in the space. Um, most of people know that uh, a space shuttle Columbia crashed and it was carrying uh, seven astronauts. And one of the astronaut uh, was in that space, space shuttle. Uh, she was from my area mm -hmm. where I was born in. And uh, coincidentally, I knew her family. I never met her, but I knew her father. Um, we had uh, um, interesting friendship despite that big age gap, uh, but we were very close. So when that incident happened, it moved so many people. Uh, uh, emotionally, uh, people were trying to understand that tragedy. And then I decided to write about uh, her life um, based on what her father told me. Um, although my, <laughs> my those books, they were published in, uh, in a very traditional setting, um, uh, in a print format they are not online uh, 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 back home but I'm trying my best to um, bring those books into like modern um, like uh, online uh, platforms so that people can buy and I'm also trying to write a new book um, probably in 2024 next year you <laughs> will uh, hear a news from uh, um, from me about my upcoming book. My upcoming book is all about what I've been doing now. Um, it would be filled with things about joy, hope, and positivity. And uh, I feel that uh, um, what experiences I'm, I'm gathering by meeting people, dancing at different settings, uh, or, or some philosophy, um, that book will be filled with those kind of elements. Well, now you have the opening scene of your book because you've been on Inside the Village. That's right. right? Yeah, we, we, now, we now know what you lead with. You, you finally hit the big time. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, Cross Canada Tour, you started on the East Coast. Uh, you're headed back to the Yukon. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the tour, maybe some highlights, what it's all about. Yes, um, so the, my tour is all connected with my videos uh, during the pandemic. So when people were watching the videos, they were sending me letters and things. I was feeling very touched by, by this reflection. That was uh, creating a reflection in my heart that why people are sending me videos, why people are making my paintings and sending me uh, all these kind of things, why they are spending their time. And uh, then I learned from them through their messages or letters that uh, actually, they are appreciating joy. They wrote me in their messages that uh, there has been uh, sadness, suffering in their life and uh, the world around them. And uh, they just appreciate uh, me or my work uh, that, uh, that I create this positivity. Then I decided that when uh, we will get some relief from uh, pandemic, I would go and visit their communities and uh, and wherever I can do, where, wherever I can go and bring the same message in person, which I was doing online through videos. So then I decided to do this cross the country tour. I started last year, because last year we got some relief from this. Yes. Um, I started it from uh, East Coast. I, I went to Newfoundland, Labrador, Nova Scotia, PEI, New Brunswick, Quebec, and by the time I reached Ontario, it was already October, and it started to feel like wintry, sub-zero temperatures <laughs> as a night. Although I don't uh, mind sub-zero temperatures. You're I, used to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I live uh, in, in, in a cold where it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it can go minus 40. But, uh, but in a van, because I'm traveling in a van, van it's, it's a very humble um, van. So uh, it was really cold in the van. So I decided to pause my tour and uh, with the intention to resume it next year. So this year I started this tour from Ontario 
and now I'm heading towards uh, um, uh, eastern provinces like after Ontario I will go to Manitoba and highlights yes I have really really amazing highlights during that the tour that has been magnificent I, I'll, I'll tell you I was in in New Brunswick and um, there's a is, a is a very small uh, community St Andrews um, uh, uh, in the south of New Brunswick um, and I just parked my car and I decided to take some break and someone parked their car behind my car and I noticed from my mirror that someone parked their car behind me <laughs> but I I didn't uh, think much at that time <laughs> and that person came out of their car and reached me and I lowered uh, down my window and uh, they pulled a hundred dollar bill and uh, put on my hand it, it, it happened so quickly that even I didn't ha had any time to think and, and then I, I asked what is this? <laughs> Why are you giving him money? <laughs> <laughs> and and that person told me that 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 uh, she she had been watching my videos for a long time and uh, she had been using my videos for her positivity and joy, and, and that was very big. It's not it's not hundred dollar bill bill. It's more like how people uh, are receiving it. How people uh, people were finding it. How people. Uh, were feeling impacted and they were trying to give back to me in in the way they they could i have a similar one more example um uh, i was doing uh, in uh, my, my my workshop uh, someone came in their wheelchair um that person was probably in uh, his 80s and uh, after the workshop and uh, he came in front of me face to face and he told me that Gudeep, I usually don't go to dance workshops or these kind of things anymore. He said that he wanted to come to let me know something face to face, eye to eye, that this positivity, this joy, this hope, it helped him a lot during his difficult first time during the pandemic. And his eyes were meeting my eyes and the emotion, those uh, happy tears i was looking at his face oh my god it just moved me so deeply from my inside it's very simple but beautiful very powerful um uh, uh, meeting uh, but it 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 made me realize the power of positive the power of joy we, we, we need it so much. So these kind of incidents, uh, um, wherever I went, uh, I met people who told me their, their personal stories uh, and uh, uh, of uh, struggles, because the uh, uh, opposite of joy is struggle or sadness mm -hmm. or suffering. It's the same like when we talk about night, there's a day when we talk about day, there's a night when we are hungry, we also uh, the opposite is is uh, is having food. So opposite of joy is uh, is sadness. And and uh, and I was thinking that uh, someone who's going through worst time, like extreme sadness, something something tragic, for them joy is more than entertainment. It's more than fun. It's something very positive, very meaningful. Something it's a, such a gift which. They were looking for, they were not looking for uh, materials, cars or money. They were looking for joy, mm -hmm. real joy in their life. So these kind of incidents, uh, they, they, they have been very powerful and they are highlights of my tour. How do you find joy, Gurdjieff? Because, because, <laughs> because, you know, I mean, you're, you're so positive in trying to preach that positivity to other people, right? But you must, there must be moments even maybe when you're driving on this road trip <laughs> down a lonely highway, uh, you know. But you need joy. Yeah, you need joy. How do you find it? Uh, I, I, usually people ask me these kind of questions. Um, this is an amazing question, I would say that. Thanks for asking. I feel that we humans, we are product of different emotions. Uh, Sometimes we are joyful, some other times we are not, sometimes we are in between, sometimes we are sad, maybe a bit angry or or some new kind of emotion because emotions are not three or four times, they are a hundred types of emotions. Um, 
Yes, being a human, I I have my moments when uh, I am not that much joyful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going through some some moment of reflection or some moment of brief uh, brief sadness too. Um, so I experience it every day from time to time. Uh, how I find it, I I I strongly believe that believe in in this philosophy of moving on. I find that. Uh, Yes, things happen in our life. Sometimes we lose things. Sometimes uh, we are in a situation when our health is not cooperating or other things happen, financial loss, uh, loss of a family member or dear friend or something like that. We grieve and it's, it's okay to grieve and it's important to grieve because we had a very important connection with uh, someone. Uh, but it's important to come back. So moving on is is very important. So I find my 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 joy moving on, even if I had lost something. I I process uh, and I I dance. I dance to clear my mind because it really helps. Activity, physical ha- activity, it really helps uh, clearing your mind, and it it brings me to the place where I am joyful again. I am happy again. So so. It's it's okay to be sad, but uh, but uh, don't stay sad for a long time. You can be sad for uh, one hour, two hours, or <laughs> one day, or maybe maybe two days if something's really serious going on. But you come back to your home of joy. I spent some time uh, on your website, and there's a lot of great quotes. Uh, there was one that I uh, I jotted down that stood out to me. Uh, and I want to read it uh, for everybody. It goes like this. Embrace change and enjoy your life as it unfolds. The hardest part about growing is letting go of the life you were accustomed to and moving forward with something new. Sometimes you have to stop worrying, wondering, and doubting, and instead have faith that things will work out for the best. You, uh, you, you really are a glass half full. Uh, <laughs> you epitomize that glass being probably more than half full. I, I do feel that this way. I, I do treat uh, life, my life and everybody's life this way that uh, uh, I usually say that uh, life is like a river and it flows without banks. Like sometimes uh, it uh, it chooses its own path or course uh, and you don't have any control. Sometimes we expect life to run in a certain way. We have some plans, some ideas, some frames. We want to to go straight or this way or this way, but we don't let it flow the way it wants to flow. So when life doesn't flow the way we want, what happens? We become sad. (laughs) We become unhappy. We regret. We find, uh, um, although uh, as a reminder, there's nothing wrong with being sad. However, during that time, uh, it's uh, important to understand that that life is always like that for every single person in the world. Uh, even someone who is successful, someone tell tell some people tells me tell me that hey you are very successful. I said that, oh you just see just small part of the picture. There are lots and lots of struggles and hard hard work too. So so we all have those type of things uh, when things didn't happen the way we want. Uh, so. So treating life the way it is and accepting it every single day. If you lost someone, which can be in a form of a, a dear friend or relative, or it can be materialistic losses too, just accepting them as plan of the universe, accepting them that life is, is always like this for every single person in the world, it can help you regain your joy And as a reminder that, don't treat joy like a fun or entertainment. For your healing, for your balance, for your fulfillment, you definitely need joy, real joy which which comes straight from your heart. Not just little smile on your lips, because we can smile to show that, that, hey, I'm happy. Uh, But real joy, when, when your heart is smiling, and when your heart is smiling, not only your lips will be smiling, your whole body will be smiling, your hands, your feet, your face, you, you'll, you'll feel that vibration. So when you treat the life the way it comes to you, um, uh, life 
is going to be good even things are not uh, feeling that good around you it's hard to top that scott i don't know what you say after that i don't know what you say uh <laughs> other than the uh the world needs uh more gurdeep uh <laughs> and and i think on behalf of everyone we hope that you uh keep on dancing oh thank you thank you scott thank you michael i i feel that uh, that uh, j- the gift of joy is uh, is very important gift which we can give to anyone to our family to our friends and most importantly to strangers cuz there are friends too we just never met them before uh and also emotions all kind of emotions they are valid there are different places to visit like we like to visit our friends so that way you go there explore those emotions but however you come back you remember that you need to go home by evening or by next next morning or maybe by next week your home is joy and you return come back find your balance and you can live fulfilled life even if you are world is not that perfect all right for all things uh, gurdeep go to uh, gurdeep.ca gurdeep pander of the yukon this has been an absolute uh, pleasure thanks for doing this today Thank you Scott and thank you Michael for having me. Thank you to your media and thanks for showing me around and you have an amazing setup with wonderful people with the, with the uh, with the workout facility as well. <laughs> thanks for having me. Thank you. It is my honor to be here. All thank right. You, Inside the village is back right after this. Reporters, editors and journalists who go the extra mile to get the story and get it right. Go behind the scenes with those who cover the stories that matter most to you and your community. Look for it in the Village Features section of your favorite Village Media website across Ontario. Back to wrap on Inside the Village, Michael Friscalanti, Editor-in-Chief at Village Media. I'm Scott Sexsmith. Wow, if you don't feel uplifted and positive and full of joy yeah. after that conversation. Yeah, you know what? It's nice. I mean, I, I, I agree, like he said, sometimes you, life can get you down, right? There's yep. things that happen in life and you can't always be joy. I mean, he sometimes says you can be unjoyful for an hour. Sometimes it lasts longer than that. But I do appreciate a guy who can who, who feels that love, positivity. And I met him on the when he came in this morning, and his van like is labeled like joy <laughs> positive. Like I was, I was worried. Is he gonna? Am I gonna recognize his car? <laughs> his van. No fear of that. No fear of that. So yeah, you know what? Uh, certainly a fantastic guy, and obviously he really enjoys the the interaction with strangers who reach out to him. It's yeah, pretty, pretty yeah, cool he really does. Uh, some great stuff on his website, uh, by the way, gurdeep.ca, uh, and he talks about joy and happiness being home. And some, sometimes you have to leave home because you're sad, mm-hmm. but the important part is to always come home. Mm-hmm. And when you put it in that context, it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of like this basement. <laughs> Our second home. <laughs> second home. And it's full of joy, happiness. <laughs> Can't hope. you feel the joy in here? Yeah, <laughs> these bricks. <laughs> you certainly can. You feel something. Uh, ITV at villagemedia.ca if you want to reach out to uh, Frisker or, or I 24 uh, 7. That email is open. What are you laughing at? We, we, and we will answer 24 7. We absolutely yeah, will. If you send us an email at 3 30 in the morning, Scott's on it. Uh, well, maybe not always, but you will get a response. Uh, okay, great show this week. Uh, thanks to uh, Drew Armstrong filling in for uh, Derek. Derek will be back uh, next week. Uh, as will uh, you and I, hopefully. Hopefully. All right. You can check uh, back episodes wherever you get your favorite podcast across the Village Media Network and at uh, InsideTheVillage.ca. For Drew Armstrong, producing this week's edition of Inside the Village, Michael Friscalanti, Editor-in-Chief here at Village Media. I'm Scott Sexsmith. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Your weekend. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>